Angels in Outfield. You might not know. <laughs> Hi guys, we just finished watching Street Trash, which was picked by Dean. If you guys have watched the 31 Days of Horror um, in previous years, you'll know that every 31 day, the day 31, the last day, the Halloween day, day 31, is picked by Dean. I always save the last one for you. Um, so I'm going to let you start off and tell me what you think of this film. Um, yeah, I was pretty disappointed. To be honest, I um, expected a lot more by expecting a lot less. Um, yeah, I thought this was going to be funny. Um, and kind of gruesome and cool and it's kind of gruesome but the, it, the story was just shit. Um, it just it was so much longer than it needed to be and it was just weird but the only redeeming factor was when they actually died was really cool and really well done. I would agree. Um, so the film is about, I mean it's about a lot of things that don't really make sense but the main storyline which I thought it was going to go with is it's about this these bunch of like hobos who um, go into a convenience store and there's like the, the guy at the convenience store has found this old liquor and he's like selling it to them but it makes him like go oozy and crazy and like explode and stuff. So I thought that the film was going to be about that and it does start there but then it just goes completely crazy, it goes into their dreams, it goes into like politics between them, brings in the mafia. <laughs> And then um, it kind of gets back to the gruesome killing at the end. I would say the killing very much, when I was started watching it, I was like, oh my god, this is like Toxic Avenger. Like, this is going to be Toxic Avenger. And especially the, the first kind of kill, he looks a lot like Basket Case. And I was like, this is going to be like a really cool, quirky film. And uh, a lot of people say online in um, the reviews that it is like a... It's meant to be like the, tr the trashiest film of all trash films. But I think that there's better. I really do. And I think that that is because... Um, Frankenhooker. Yeah, Frankenhooker. Which a, a, a guy in there, Dean, was like, that guy looks familiar. And he's from Frankenhooker. Random, random Dorman's the main guy in Frankenhooker. Yeah. Um, which is Dean's favourite horror movie. But, so I'm all for a good B, C grade horror movie that's pretty gruesome. I don't mind that. But I found, like, the sexual content, and I know I feel like some people are going to get mad at me, but I've got to say, the sexual content was a little bit off-putting. They do gang rape a girl and leave her for dead, and then someone else comes and, and fucks yeah. her. So, like, call me fucking a prude or whatever, but it was just a bit like, is it this even a horror movie? It like, was unnecessary, right? It was, like, yeah. So, like, you watch different movies, um, like Monsters Ball and stuff like that, which have um, I don't think I've even seen Monsters Ball but yeah like different movies that will have like some really intense rape scenes and stuff like that it makes you uneasy but like it's all for the plot line um, yeah. and it develops it yeah uh, and a good example of that is Anna Fritz which is a film that I watched this month which was about having sex with a dead corpse but this was just like out of nowhere there's like a gang rape thing and then someone else goes and it's just a, a lot much this is implied like it doesn't actually happen um but I, th I think it's important to warn you guys, and it's I know that they tell you it happens, yeah, um, but you don't see it. But um, I do want to say that the reason I do mention this and I continue to mention them is because people actually thank me all the time on Twitter for mentioning that if there's like an animal kill or if there's you know sexual content, people actually thank me. So just don't get mad. Um, and as I said, I'm I'm all for gruesome like disgusting really disturbing movies you guys know i like that but this was just kind of cheap and gross and i'm really surprised a lot of people think that this is like the the coolest trash film of all time because i really don't feel that way at all just like um you like warnings when there's um sport involved in movies <laughs> you know, just different yeah warnings, yeah yeah, you know? yeah angels in the outfield you might not know <laughs> A funny thing I read about this film, though, is that the guy who plays Bronson, um, I believe the guy who was initially playing him was uh, fired on the first day of um, shooting, and then the guy who replaced him didn't read the script, kind of read it, like, scene by scene as they went, didn't understand what the movie was about. After the film wrapped, three months later, he said he finally read the script, and he still didn't understand who his character was. So I thought that was quite telling of the film. There's these random war parts, it's just kind of like all over the place and I feel like to me it, 
in my head I felt like, oh, maybe the director just wanted to make all these different cool scenes and try and, like, chuck them together in a movie. Yeah. Um, the director who did this actually did a lot of TV shows and um, more cinematography stuff. So this is his only written and directed kind of film. Um, or he's directed TV shows, but this is his only film. So that was interesting for me. But in other news, oh, what am I going to give it? I'm going to give it probably, like, a 3 out of 10. Yeah. Sorry, uh, and, and all three is the yeah like is the three scenes. like scenes. Yeah. Yeah. No, um, I agree with that. But Dean and I are gonna do something uh, different on camera today. I've actually got this candy. I'll show you what it looks like. And it's from Canada. My mom went to Canada recently. Um, I've never tried any like Canadian candy, and this is like actual Halloween candy, I think. So I thought I'd give it a go. So we're gonna try that for the first time. Just smells like brown sugar, molasses. Curse. Toronto. Oh god, that's good. Canada. That's good. It just tastes like brown sugar there, huh? Mm. Molasses. Toffee. It's weird, it's really melty. Mm. But it's a bit harder. Ah! I right. still haven't tried candy corn, I just wanted to try that on camera. I thought, well, would you give the candy? I'd give it like a... Five? Well, that's a more enjoyable experience in the movie. I would agree. <laughs> One last thing. I'm gonna try and put some in my mouth. One last thing is I'm going to do a Q&A for my wrap up so we can go through and I can name all of the best movies from this month, put them in order, figure it all out. And if you guys want to ask me what the best movie for this or for that or any questions about 31 Days of Horror, please leave them below. I will take the questions from this video. So um, leave them down below. I really wanted to give you guys the option who are actually watching the 31 Days of Horror to ask me questions. So if you have any questions about 31 Days of Horror, Anything that you'd think I'd like recommend to you for this or that, let me know. And um, happy Halloween. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> I finally finished. I don't know if I'll do this next year, to be honest. I did feel like the views dropped off a lot. And I felt it, it was killing me, guys. It was killing me. It was fun. It was a journey. And we made it. And I thank you so much for watching. Um, I'll see where I'm at next year because I always say this. And then next year comes around and I want to do it again. Mm -hmm. But thank you for watching guys and um, I'll see you in a video shortly. Bye guys!